What's up, nerds? Welcome back. Well, it's finally come. We've reached the end of the storyline, but it's been a very fun ride along the way. So let's talk about the end of Gun Honey with issue number four. Now, if by chance you have been following along with me, you may be thinking to yourself, Dylan, you did a review for issue one and issue two, but there's no issue three video from you, and now you're talking about the last one. That is true. I did end up reading issue three. I just didn't get it. I will be ordering it because the company was actually sending them to me, and then just like last week, yeah, sometime like middle of last week, I got issue four, and I was like, huh. Well, I never got issue three, so let me go and read it online. So I did that. And then I was like, you know what? Since I have one, two, and four, I'm going to need to get three just so I have the whole thing. So I will end up having the whole thing. But yeah, I will very quickly go over what happened in issue three just in case you're curious. Basically, if you remember, at the end of the second issue, what happened was Joanna helped this one drug lord or this like one crime lord she he wanted someone busted out of prison because he wanted to personally kill him and then they found out at the end of that issue that apparently that guy she busted out of prison or helped bust out of prison he went and killed the guy who initially hired her so then issue three picked up with her being in trouble for that with like the government agents who were basically trying to like be her handler or whatever so they sent her to go and like track down the guy she busted out because apparently he was untraceable he had no fingerprints he had been like burned all over his body so they didn't really know who the hell he was so they were like you're gonna go and find him find him for us so she did that and they went through this whole night nice and again i understand why that issue sold out because there's a very nice scene in what is um i think it's like a korean spa or something like that one of those ones where like they separate men and women because you get fully naked when you're in there anyway so that's where they found like some more evidence about the guy they tracked him down and then at the very end he revealed himself to be one of joanna's brothers but if you remember she had like four yeah i think like four brothers so we didn't really know and that's actually what we're going to be finding out here because we're starting out where she's talking again it's like a little bit of the flashback where she's talking about like her past and we see where she ends up at the house and she sees like all of her brothers and her dad they're all dead one of them apparently was even trying to crawl out of the wreckage as he was like burning alive so she was very much dismayed by all of that, obviously. And then we come back over to here where, like I said, they encountered him because he was in like this private place. Because what she ended up finding out was that because of all the burns and shit on his body, he was basically always in torment. Like his skin is just always fucking in pain because, well, he was burned over the majority of his body. So that's why he was there. And he, she even said, like, you know, jail must have been torture for him, considering he, he didn't really have access to just sit in a tub all day long. So anyway, he's telling her, because they call her Mouse. So he's saying, like, I'm sorry, Mouse, you shouldn't see me like this, which, yeah, he's not only is he all burned, he's all naked. So it's like, gross. Anyway, so she's sitting, standing there. She's like, what, like what, naked or covered with scars from burns? He's no more Arab than you or I, is what one of, like, her informants had told her. So she's like, yeah, true words never been spoken. So the, um, <laughs> the guy comes up, he's like trying to tell him, you're under arrest. And he points the gun at his head. He's like, he's got balls. I'll give him that. So he's, she's asking like, who were they? Because like there were a bunch of guys that came in to ambush them. And they at first thought they were working for him. And he's basically saying, well, he's the one who killed them. So they're like, okay, who are those guys then? Because we thought they worked for you and you killed them. So he tells her, search the bodies. Maybe we'll find out who they were. And she's even standing there thinking, like, is it Jason? Jeremy? James? Not Jack. It can't be Jack. And then she's like, dear God, it's Jack. You can see it now. So they go over and they start like, well, uh, he starts, like, searching through their pockets and shit like that as she goes on talking to him, basically asking, like, what happened to you? And he's telling her, like, when the explosion went off, he was in the basement, so he did end up getting burned all over his body, but he didn't die. He was able to crawl out of, like, the rubble and shit. And then apparently he was found by, like, some nuns, because he said, the sisters told me my skin came off in strips. They didn't expect me to live. You were gone by the time I could stand again. So she starts out like trying to apologize, but it's like, no, it's okay. I'm glad that, you know, I didn't come looking for you because I knew you were probably somewhere safe. Like you got away. They didn't come after you. So it's fine. And then he's saying like, I should be dead. My lungs, my kidneys, everything's ruined. She's like, but you're still alive. He's like, yeah, anger is a very powerful drug. That's what's kept me going. So he finally finds something in one of the guy's pockets. It just says dens. So he goes over and he's like, guys, does dens mean anything to you? 
And she's saying, like, I've heard of it, some sort of men's club on an island nine or ten miles offshore. So her brother Jack comes up and is like 12. So she's saying that apparently it's supposed to cater to every appetite, as in opium dens, dens of iniquity, what? So he says it's the owner's name, Den. Dennis Ugras, which is the guy that, well, one of the guys that hired, because apparently they're siblings. So one of the guys that hired her to bust him out of prison that he killed. So he's saying the former owner, so she's like Buddy's brother. You killed them both. So he says, Den started out in Malaysia, married a local woman. I traced the bombing to his club there. He knew who did it. He wouldn't talk. So we see where he's like literally injecting him in the neck. So she's saying like, oh, okay, so you killed him too. So the secret died with him. He says, there's still one Ugras left. The one who inherited the club after her husband's tragic overdose. So that's where we see they're going there, obviously. So that way they can try and infiltrate there and get more information. So she's saying, thanks for getting the boat so quickly. She's telling, um... The guy, I still can't remember, what the hell is his name? It'll come back to me. Anyway, so he's saying, like, well, don't worry, like, these were actually all impounds, like, the boats that we're using, they were all impounded. So she's like, all right, well, in that case, then thank you for not telling her, you know, what we're actually up to. So he says, uh, the man saved our lives, so I'm following your lead for now, but he has to go back to jail, you know that. And she's like, well, it would kill him. And he asks her, like, and how many people has he killed? So she says, one too few. So obviously, they're talking about whoever this last person is anyway. So they show up and he's the one who's actually going to be the one sneaking in. So like this, I guess, hostess or whatever the hell she's supposed to be. She's coming in. She's like, oh, good. Like, you've been here with us before. You know the, the password, right? And he says, yes, Dennis sends his best. She's like, oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? From now on, say Fiona, because there's been some change in ownership. So she's taking him inside and we can see where there are people just kind of standing there. At first, I thought this dude was literally getting a blowy over here down in the corner. But no, like this chick just has her head like resting in his lap. So still probably what's going on. But you know, and then there's a dude sitting at the table over here just literally doing some blow. So she's asking, like, can I get you a drink or something stronger? He's like, no, maybe later. So he's coming in and then like, this is the new owner. And she's saying like, oh, no, a man like this, he obviously has some other desires right now first last and in between am i right well he'll want some female attention she's like first last and in between am i right so she's saying like come on i'll show you tonight's selection and that's where we see all of these uh whores just here waiting for him and shit so she's saying like or do you want something you can use those big fists of yours on so she takes him over to this one he's like oh yeah this one you can do whatever you want with her for the right price so as she's saying that all of a sudden she gets knocked down by the person who's in the mask and yes it is joanna with the nipple clamps on so she's standing there and she's like took you long enough because i'm sure she wasn't exactly comfortable waiting anyway so this new owner i think her name was fiona she's laying there like you're never gonna get off this island alive or whatever and then he's saying, we weren't supposed to leave that spa alive either, were we? But here we are. So she's saying, like, you don't, you didn't matter. Afan was the one who needed to die. And then she asks, like, what is that? Because Joanna's putting something in her hand. She's like, oh, it's a detonator. You're going to want to keep those switches, like, pulled together. Because basically it's like a dead man switch. If she lets go of it, then it's going to explode. So she's like, you son of a bitch and shit like that. Or what? how dare you? So she says, just answer my questions. Then we'll leave. And someone can take that off your hands. Guard the door. So... He goes to go guard the door, and then she's saying, like asking her, your husband died rather than say who firebombed the tans. It was you, wasn't it? And so she's saying, like, what do you care? Why does anyone care about that scum? So she says, an arms dealer and his little street rat boys. So she's just asking her, like, did you fucking do it? So she says, do what? I placed some explosives, yeah, but if it hadn't been me, it would have been somebody else. There was a woman offering good money. I was just the one who took it. So she's asking her, like, what woman? And then we don't see the end result of that just yet because she's coming out and he asks like did she talk he's like yeah she talked and then he asks is she dead she's like no she's unconscious so he's saying like i guess that wasn't a real detonator then because if she's unconscious obviously she's not still holding on tightly to the damn thing she's like no this one is though and then she explodes a damn bomb like just taking them all out well the majority of them out i'd imagine so they take off on the boat and everything and then he's even asking her like well he says i thought you didn't kill people she's like yeah i thought so too and then she tells him, like, take the wheel, I want to get dressed. So she starts doing that, and he says, you going to tell me what she said? And she's like, it doesn't matter. It's over. So he's asking her, like, does that mean I can go and call in backup so that way they can come in and, like, clean up this whole situation? She's like, yeah, but just let me go and, you know, talk to my brother real quick before anybody comes along. Might save some bloodshed. So she goes down, and she, like, gives him a hug and tells him, like, she's dead and everything. So he's saying, like, tell me everything. So we can assume because he's over here calling his people. So we don't know everything she tells him or that. Yeah, everything that she tells him. But she says, what if we got you to a hospital? And he's like, after eight years? No, it's no use. You and I both know 
like anyway who'd treat a, a man wanted dead or alive which i guess is a good point anyway so we see we're like the reinforcements arrive and they're about to go and apprehend him so he's she's saying like well you can still run like you can get away from here and he's like no you still believe in fairy tales we both know what i need to do now and what you so he looks over because there was a gun on the table that's why they had that close up and then when he looks over when like the cops and shit arrive he looks over and sees she's holding the gun now so he's like you bitch you did this but of course it was just all an act you will see what i mean in a second so we see where they go back to um, the director, Director Morse, and she like hands her the money. She's like, here, I, you know, I said we would be able to pay your rate and you came through. So here's your payment. Anyway, she takes off and she's telling her, like, you don't trust me. And Joanna's like, I don't trust anyone. So she says, you're working for the U.S. government now, Joanna. We don't cheat people. So we see where she's leaving from there and they're bringing in her brother, who's like director morse is about to be the one to interrogate him she's like go ahead and like have him sit down i have a few questions for him we're gonna have a conversation so this is where we finally get filled in on what uh fiona told joanna where she says the woman was offering good money i was just the one who took it so she that's where she asked her like what woman and then we see director morse calling jack an ugly motherfucker so then we see the conversation continues where she asks again what woman and then fiona finally relents and says the one they call the burrow bitch which if you remember from the first issue is what they call director morse so she says get on the wrong side of the u.s government they end you so that's where we see jack is still sitting there and if you'll notice right below his hand yes since joanna was sitting there she left him a gun because that's what she does very well anyway so director morris is saying like let's start with something simple like what's your real name so then he tells her my name is jack tan from gay long though my father was corsican oh you remember so the people who are like listening on the other side of the glass are like what is he doing and then all of a sudden we see where he like tips the chair back grabs the gun and then shoots the bitch so i don't really know where he shot her it looks like he shot her more like on this side which i mean not that you can't kill someone by shooting them here i probably would have tried to aim a little bit more this way anyway they all go running into the room because they're like oh shit he just took her out and then we see like right before they can get in there he turns the gun on himself and shoots himself too so that probably was for the best because yeah they were never going to stop pursuing him you know and like his sister had said i mean he's always in torment he's always in agony because of his whole skin condition now so there wasn't really in many other options left for him but since they know or they knew who it was who like kind of placed the hit on them and their family they were like yeah it, it's probably for the best you go kill her and then yeah if you want to die it's probably for the best there's nothing anyone can do for you now so we see where um he shows up to Corsica and then she sneaks up behind him and like points a gun at his head and she says that was fast he's like well if you don't want to be found then don't go to your dad's backyard so she says say what you've come to say agent Barrow he says it's not agent Barrow anymore so she's like oh did you have like an attack of conscience or did they find out what you did and they fired you and then he's like no it's assistant director Barrow vacancy at the top they had to make some uh, promotions and he says but I'm not here in an official capacity as far as they know I'm on vacation they're not looking for you so she says they he's like we we are not looking for you the files show he got that gun in there on his own no idea how so she's like tell me the truth brooke did you know he's like i didn't i swear i didn't know so she says not about my family maybe but how many others have you known about assistant director he says and what about you you think no one but fiona got killed in that explosion and uh and yeah dens what about rio verde neither of us is up for sainthood she's like yeah true words so she starts undressing him they both get naked she's like come on killer let's go wash off our sins and they both walk into like the water and shit so that's how this particular story ends and i gotta say it actually wrapped up a very nice way some people would might look at it and say like it wrapped up a little too clean a little too quick but i mean everything was laid out just the way it needed to be and everything did you know line up just the way it needed to so overall this story was actually very fun like i enjoyed the shit out of it and yes not just because you know there was a whole lot of new in here which was is always you know it keeps the attention it does do that but i mean the story itself was actually really well done once like they were actually going to find uh her brother that's what i figured out i was like oh it's her brother because he's all burned and shit that's why you know they don't know anything about him so yeah it made sense i picked up on it right on that issue right before like i turned the page and i was like oh yeah see there it is it is her brother so i will say maybe some other people would have picked up on that sooner i don't know i was just having fun enjoying the story and it was a very enjoyable story so i hope to see either her stories continue or this creative team come together for another such story 
I would love it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it has me sold. Like, I love, you know, comics like this. I've always been more of, like, a superhero type of guy, but I definitely like, like, you know, detective, crime, like, just mystery type of shit, too, and that's definitely where what we got here. And, I mean, it was just, it was enjoyable all the way through, so... I will definitely probably end up rereading this whenever I just want something that I know I'm going to enjoy rereading. It'll probably be this. But yeah, I do have to get issue three, which I will be doing that. But overall, story, very well done. The art, definitely serviceable for this. And yeah, everything was just, it laid out very well. I liked each of the characters, like, personalities. I mean, they maybe could have, like, expanded a little bit more on Barrow. But overall, I felt like, you know, he... He wasn't supposed to be the main focus. It was Joanna and her family. So I'm glad that we saw all of that. It was just very well done. I can't really think of anything else positive to say about it. But I think that's going to do it for my review on this. So if anybody read all the way through this, if you were keeping up with this with me, do feel free to share your thoughts with me down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely make sure you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when I have new content coming out for you and again a big thank you to titan comics and specifically hard case crime i believe that's their imprint big thank you to y'all i really enjoyed this story so much so i'm so glad that y'all kept me connected to it even though we missed an issue that's fine i still read it you knew i was going to so thank you again to them for that i really do appreciate it that was so cool of y'all but if you're done here, then go and read a book, especially this one. If you're able to find it anywhere, pick up every issue. And if not, then I will see you on my next video.